Uh, it's a 1961 Gibson Les Paul SG uh, as uh, uh, for the um, collectors you know, they, they, they they redesigned the Les Paul called this a Les Paul up until about uh, 63 and dropped the uh, Les Paul name and then they became the just the uh, SG for a solid solid guitar uh, this one I got from Groon's uh, Groon guitars uh, I think about four years ago, and, and I've always loved SGs, and um, especially the 61s, uh, because the, the, the necks were really kind of wide and flat. They're not for everyone, but I, mm. they're just, they're, it's a big uh, nut width and very flat and kind of thin. It's just, um, uh, just always liked the, the, that particular shape of a, of a 61, and, uh, and just, I guess whatever the the lathe or whatever material or machinery they made them this way, and then they changed over time. And um, sixty one is always just one of my favorite. This one is plagued with problems, and uh, but it just turned out to be really great. Uh, um, these were these guitars are very accident prone, where most of them will have a headstock break right here, or uh, a heel break, or even something here. Uh, this one didn't have that, um, but this one is, is uh, the guys at Groons call this the plate of death. And um, what had happened, it had suffered a, a big enough break that whoever owned this before me or, who, or multiple owners before me decided to put this big plate on here to, to, uh, to fix the neck. You could probably see that there was actually an additional shim here. And um, so it was. It suffered a big crack, and they uh, parted out this guitar. So pretty much like none of the parts are original. But it's. I've I've had really straight versions of it where everything was original, and this one is by far the best one that I've owned. You know, and, and it's like a, you know, probably a sixth of a price of of one that's totally straight. Um, this would have had a. Uh, Thing called the sideways vibrola, which is a great looking piece of of hardware, but it it uh, um, its functionality is not wonderful. And uh, so this was replaced. I bought this, and it already had the Bigsby on it. But I decided, well, I want to see about putting that old piece on there. And uh, so I put that on there, and uh, and then put a uh, long vibrato on there as well, which is another. Um, type of vibrato that's a little more functional and it looks great and then I ended up putting it the, the original one back on there original to when I bought this so I put the Bixby the horseshoe Bixby on and it's being the most um, functional is, is that where all the little holes yeah are? that's why there's all these little holes on here so this is <laughs> this series of holes would have been um, the three right here would have been the original vibrola and then you could see these other little ones which would have been the uh, the Maestro uh, long vibrato, which you can see holes here. So um, this is by by no means a uh, a valuable guitar, but it's 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 great. And I ended up putting this thing um, a string butler on here, which was uh, I saw Dean Parks, who's kind of my guitar hero, um, do here, which which allows there to be. Um, a little bit less of a tension or an angle at the at the tuners, so it actually makes the uh, um, string tension a little less rigid, and uh, the, the tuning stability mm. uh, stays a little stronger, especially when using the the, the Bigsby. But this this is a great guitar. Yeah. Every every time I pick it out of the case, I go, "Wow, that's really great." <laughs> <laughs>